Hi, this is Russian Protos Expert. I got myself a copy of Trash 2, the latest incarnation of Trash from Isotope. And essentially, it's a saturation and distortion plugin, but it's far more than that. I've had a chance to be playing this for a bit of time now, and I want to go through it in detail and show you all the different features that it has. And then we can look at it in separate bits, and I'll show you on some material. So what we have is down at the bottom here. If you're used to Isotope plugins, you'll be used to this by now. If you use things like Nectar or Alloy, is these push buttons which are selecting different parts of the plugin. So we have two filters. We have the trash plugin, which is made of the distortion, saturation, and mashing, uh, sand mashing area. Uh, we have a convolution, which is doing things like modeling of cabs and all sorts of stuff. Th three mics, dynamic condenser and ribbon. Uh, with stereo imaging. We have dynamics, which is gate, a compressor. And we have a delay unit as well. Uh, and several versions of that delay unit. Now, the cool thing is we can choose the order in which the signal flows through it. We could even have the filters working in parallel as well as series and of course any of these things can be switched on and off but if I wanted to put my dynamics before I had my trash going or vice versa so you could do all that kind of stuff what you basically have is, is as you move through each of these units you get this big UI at the top here which gives you all the control on it so let me go through them the filters are cool because the filters are powerful to start with uh, you have several filter types you have six band filtering basically each EQ but you have varied stuff so you have very clean filters peak high pass band pass and low pass low shelf and high shelf uh, then you have uh, resonant filters uh, again high pass band pass and low pass you have some retro sounding ones some saturated stuff some screaming stuff which is just wild some synth ones which are really nice to put on synths like pads and stuff like that and you have these ones called vowel where you can do vocal vowel filtering as well now the cool thing about them is you can switch them on and off so you have all six bands on if you want there you are and they have they're fully variable and they also have variable Q so you have frequency gain and Q and depending on what you have as well if you choose different frequencies and different types of filters so if we choose this number five now and we make that into a a resonant filter that Q goes and you get the resonant frequency instead like that but at any point, you can turn them on and off. So there's two of those. What's very cool about them, though, is you can modulate them. Now, what that means is that over time, you can change the filter frequency, which is really cool. So you can do things like wire effects on guitars. You can do filters on synths. So if I take something like a synth, and I've got one here. Look at this. We've got a frequency there, and it's going to sweep between those two frequencies. And you can either modulate it. So I've got it on four times that way. If I play this synth... So I turn that instead to a synth low pass. I'll go back to a standard high pass. Or even better, go to a low pass, you can get the old. I've got two filters in that. The second one's doing filtering here. We'll look at the filters. There's a filter going there. So if you bypass that for a second, go back to the first filter.
And then down here in the right, we can do some really cool stuff. And of course, this is synced to the door, which is really quite cool. So different, different shapes as well. So that's the filters and to say modulation is really cool on them. Of course, as well, you can use the envelope shaping as well instead. So you can actually, uh, the incoming signal shapes where the envelope works. And you've got an attack and release time on there. Now that, where that works really well is again, as I say, if you do it on something like a guitar, you can use it as a wah-wah effect instead. So you can come into the filters and uh, create really cool wah effects. I could come into this now, let's turn that off, this filter off for a second. And play this guitar. Let's choose a filter frequency first. Let's choose five will do. That will do, turn all the rest of these off. Turn a really nice retro res band pass. If I make this really peaky, you get a real wah. So that's the filters. Of course, it's called trash. The big thing is the distortion. So if we just turn the filter off for a second, come back to the trash side of it, and uh, turn trash on, then you have this huge amount of filtering for the distortion, different distortion types. So here's the library, which you can go through. And as you can see straight away, there's a huge library that comes with it. If you want to saturate that guitar a bit, choose a saturation, tape saturation. <laughs> My preamp here, my drive. And what you can do then is you can adjust the curve yourself. Now, where it gets really nice then is, of course, once you've been through all of this, you can do some serious things. You do some more filtering on it as well. There, there's a filter built into that. You can do it in multi band mode, so you can put different distortion on the bottom end of the guitar, and then you've got on the top end of the guitar, which is really nice. Uh, but then the really nice thing is using the convolution because that gives you cabinets and stuff. Just turn that down a little bit. What I like as well is you can mix them, so you've got the original guitar there. Let's put that in a uh, convolution setting. Let's choose a amp. And some of these are really nice. Uh, now the, the, the names, uh, I understand why they have to do it because they can't actually say, hey, this is a Fender Twin, but it's it would be nice to, uh, to go through them. And of course you could do it yourself. You could rename all the presets. Uh. But there's hundreds and hundreds of convolution settings. Then what you can do as well, you can then change the mic. Then you can do some really cool stuff. You can change the width of that now. Now you might, might want to put your headphones on for this. Thank you. 
Now, if you want to come back to the trash filter as well, you can do some really cool stuff. You can build basically your own shapes as well. So if you wanted to come in here and you think, well, actually, I'd like to do a bit of dipping in there, you can uh, go in, change the shape of this for a start. <laughs> And as you can see, you can do some pretty cool stuff. If you double click on the line as well, you can add a second point in. Now add into that then, you've got a delay unit. And you've got five types of, six types of delay, sorry, I can't count today. You can trash those up as well. We can put some really big delays on. Now what's really nice as well is if you come to the convolution, you can load your own library in, which actually effectively means that uh, if you've got uh, reverb impulses, you can actually load those in. I've got all of the reverb impulses for all the lexicon reverbs. So I can come here and load in a lexicon reverb. So I could come into uh, a plate reverb, bongo reverb. And now in here, if I just turn the trash off for a second, I've got myself a convolution reverb unit. Now, the one thing I'd slightly like to see is at the moment, there's no modulation on the delay unit. What would be cool then, of course, is you could modulate. Uh... If this was modulatable, this delay time, you could then have things like chorus and flanger and, and phaser effects. Like this. So that would be be nice to see, uh, would be that as well. So as I say, we've got two filters that are identical and huge amount of variety. And then we have the, the trash side, which does everything from taking a piece of audio and completely obliterating it to some really nice subtle stuff. So I've got a bass guitar here that I've, I've been playing with. And what I've added to this, great amount of presets as well if you want to come in here and, and track the presets. We haven't got time to go through them now. But if you come in here then, so on this bass, I've added a bit of lift. I've used it as a standard EQ unit. Uh, in Trash, I could go through and I could come in. I could choose Tape Saturation. I can add, can add a bit in there. So I'm multi at the moment. And it's actually quite interesting. If you go into multiband mode, you can sometimes resonate. Uh, the frequencies get some really nice tones coming through as well, which is quite interesting. So I came back to distortion here. And with something like saturate, just tape saturation. In fact, the nice push-pull one's nice.
we'll snap that for a soft knee on it. Snapping all that bottom end out now. There's the original. That's very nice as well. So of course the other thing that we could use trash for is, uh, is uh, drum parts. Let's turn that down a bit. Okay, so let's add in trash to this now. There we go. So straight away, of course, we could filter it. Let's turn trash off for a second, put the filter on it. You could do some aggressive filtering on a drum kit. So we could take all the top end and the bottom end off straight away. We could take the come into six here and make that a very, very steep roll off on the end there. Bottom here as well. And let's get ourselves a different filter. So straight away you can see the filters are very powerful. So I'm going to change the cue of that again. And what I'm going to do actually, put an envelope on this and then just change the threshold. Change the attack time. Now, there's the original. Bit of a squidgy envelope in there now. Let's trash it up a bit now then. Let's put some real filth on it. it now get it very very hardly compressed so it's, it's, it's just really pumping I'm gonna to go to convolution now and choose one of the wacky vowels a bit wider so as you can see there's a huge variety of adaptation on on trash and some of these impulses are just wild so something like the uh, I think it's the uh, FX one's got some really nice stuff
And if nothing else, even if it's it's not necessarily a huge distortion that you're doing on it, what you can do with Trash that you can't do with a lot of plugins is create very imaginative sounds that you wouldn't normally be able to get from conventional stuff. Often, if you've been in production a long time, you, you think, oh, they've used that reverb, or they've used that compressor. The great thing about Trash is it gives you this palette of almost infinite variation audibly, and you can do some really cool stuff. And if you're subtle sometimes, like behind this drum kit, you could go... put something in behind it like that. You've got this kind of almost nondescript reverb type sound going on, which is a bit trashy, a bit convolved and stuff like that. Of course, we could come right back out again and we could uh, just switch that filter off a second and just use it as a convolution reverb, which is great. We could go into here again, a drums plate, open that up, turn the mix right down again. Or some really short ones like the drum rooms. That one. I've got myself. Now, if you see this exclamation mark, and uh, I'll be doing a tutorial series on this shortly, uh, that's because it can't load the whole one in. To, to preserve memory, it has a setting where if you uh, want to load in very long impulses, like big long reverb impulses, it will cut them short to preserve performance. So what you have to do is you have to go to the options window here, convolution, and just whack that all the way up. That's what I do, basically. If you want to just load it, let's just load one in again. It's got a convolution engine uh, built into it, which is really nice. So, Trash 2, uh, there's a very big show until. Of course, you could use it on anything, vocals, acoustic guitars, whatever you want. It's entirely up to you. Uh, the sky's the limits, really. Is As I say, I wasn't, I wasn't a user of Trash 1. Uh, I know some people swore by it, and some people absolutely uh, swore at it. But uh, what I have to say is that it, this is an incredibly powerful piece of kit now. On things like electric basses, electric guitars, it's just, the convolution itself is just worth its weight in gold. I think it's one of the best convolution models around for trying to get uh, guitars to put them into a context of being in a room. So it's good at that. You get a three convolution engine uh, to host your reverb impulses if you haven't got one already. So uh, you wouldn't have to buy something uh, convolution reverb because you could use uh, impulses and there's thousands out there on the web already. You could just load into this. Uh, it's got dynamics. It's got, uh, as I say, fantastic distortion. You can infinite distortion variation, two filters with envelope shaping. And uh, it's also got uh, the LFO features on it as well. You do some really cool stuff with synths and stuff like that. It's got the delay engine built in. I wish they'd, uh, as I say, put modulation on that would be nice. Having the ability to vary between the two of them as well is cool. Having a limiter on it as well is cool. So, of course, when you're dealing with distortion, the, the danger is that you just start thrashing everything to death and the limiter stops you from clipping on the output stage. Uh, has a enormous amount of presets as well. So I give it a huge thumbs up. Uh, I say I've had the uh, opportunity to play this uh, before release, which is nice. And... Uh, I have to say, I was telling some of the team uh, that the Convolution uh, is some of the best guitar sounds I've been able to get from a unit. So Trash 2, Editor's Choice Award, it's well worth it. And check it out because it's, it's it's an incredible piece of uh, software and a great plugin. And it's becoming more and more the case that I'm just using Isotope plugins on all of my mixes. Thanks for watching and I'll see you again soon.